Okay, before I start the video, uh, I should warn you, according to my girlfriend, about spinning heads and frying brains. Uh, this is not for the faint-hearted, and the information does come hard and fast. So if you start to get confused by something, pause the video, think about it, you can always come back to it, uh, but please enjoy the video. Hi, my name's John, amateur radio call sign M7CPT, also known to my CB friends as Captain Scarlet. Um, in this video, I'm going to be talking about HF propagation, also known as Skywave. I will not be talking about VHF and UHF, although I may touch on a couple of little aspects that also affect them. And I'm not going to be talking about ground wave, although one of the frequencies does actually become very close to ground wave and has similar effects. At foundation level, the UK's entry level license, we're taught that VHF and UHF travels line of sight or near line of sight, whereas HF travels up into the atmosphere before being reflected or refracted back down to earth. The higher the frequency, the higher up into the atmosphere it goes. This image shows a little bit closer to what you'll actually experience in real life. Um, with frequencies going up to both the F layer, bouncing back down to the E layer and occasionally going back up to the F layer again. Um, also uh, signals can be trapped in the F layer or even the E layer depending on the frequency and they can be duct ducted for quite some con considerable distance before returning to Earth. Also, there's a thing called sporadic E, which occurs in the E la layer during solar flares, which will open up things like 10 and 12 meters for short periods of time. Furthermore, you'll notice the ionospheric tilt, and I will be covering the most likely cause for this. So what is diffraction? In its simplest terms, it's a bending of radio signals. Um, as you can see from this image, as the radio hit signal hits the top of a hill, it is bent over the hill so it can actually be heard just a little bit beyond line of sight. Now the lower the frequency the more this diffraction occurs, so the closer to the hill you can be heard. In this image, we see an example of bounce. Uh, if each box is a metal box, preventing the receiver and transmitter having a line of sight, the signal can appear to be bent round corners by reflecting off the metal surfaces surrounding it. A similar thing can happen in nature with hills depending on the composition of the materials in the hill. If a hill has got high metal content, the reflection will occur and the less of the signal will be lost. During the, the summer months, the F1 and F2 layers have a clear distinction and are nice and wide apart. D and E layers are a fraction closer together, whereas on the winter days, the F1 and F2 become closer 
and there is a slight opening in the E and D layers. On the night times it's fairly constant. Uh, you have E and F layers. The F layer merges, it just becomes one layer and the D layer disappears and it all leaves you with the E layer. Now sporadic E can occur on the night time which will extend some of the higher frequencies through the night but not always. Another interesting detail about Skywave is called Near Vertical Instance Skywave or NVIS for short. Um, as you can see from the picture your radio waves are going practically straight up and bouncing back down to the other side of a hill that is just out of line of sight and this last summer uh, I had a particular experience with Envis where I could actually hear stations up right across the UK including on the opposite side of the Pennines and I was using Envis to reach them and receive them as well. Now if you remember one of the earlier slides uh, it mentioned ionospheric tilt and I said I'd be offering a possible explanation as to why this occurs. Uh, we know the ionosphere is electrically charged from the Sun but there is also something else that the Sun does to the ionosphere that is more to do with the magnetic field. I'm sure everyone's familiar with the uh, experiment where you place a magnet underneath a piece of paper, scatter the iron filings on and show the magnetic fields of the magnets. In school we're taught that the earth is identical to a magnet, a north pole and a south pole and equal magnetic forces surrounding the earth. In reality when a solar flare strikes the earth or is aimed towards the earth it causes a distortion of the magnetic field due to the magnetic field within the actual solar winds. Fortunately solar winds are not normally directed directly at earth in fact the last major solar wind to hit Earth was recorded back in 19, uh, sorry, 1859 during the Carrington event uh, which there are plenty of videos on YouTube worth watching. Due to the majority of the solar winds travelling east or west of Earth um, the distortion is a little bit more and can cause ionospheric tilt which leads to ducting amongst the F layers. This is only my personal theory, uh, theory as to why this tilt actually occurs. Further research is required. Now onto grey line. Grey line is not the black and white between day and night. It's the grey line. Dawn and dusk is gradual. So let me first change this image. Yeah, that's much better. Um, uh, as you can see there are several bands of grey running along the grey line. It doesn't go dark in one go. Now there are also characteristics differences between the morning and the night time. The morning grey line will magnify the effects of 
the lower frequencies that are active during the night and they will become stronger in the mornings whereas the evening grey line will become will magnify the effects of the daytime bands and they will become stronger um, the majority of people broadcast a long grey line so they follow the line of the grey line well, this gives you 20 minutes before it and 20 minutes after well there is another another way of using grey line to your advantage and that is to broadcast across grey line if for example you want to talk to America on say 17 20 meters if you wait until the grey line is over the Atlantic so that we're actually beyond the grey line and there before it we're broadcasting across the grey line and our signal will be amplified in both directions similarly on the mornings with the morning grey line amplifying 80 and 40 meters furthermore as we head away from the solar minimum and towards the solar maximum which we'll be here in three to four years time these effects will become magnified to a far greater degree during a solar maximum you can reach the majority of the world on as little as 8 watts on most bands. One other characteristic I've noticed about the evening grey line that I've not noticed on the morning grey line shortly after the midway point there seems to be a 10 to 15 minute dead zone um, where I lose signals across pretty much everywhere just for that short space of time on the higher frequencies if anyone's got any information about this or you've experienced it please leave a mention of that in the comments um, it would be greatly appreciated and if I ever find out the cause of it be sure there will be a follow up video to this thank you I hope you found the video both enjoyable and informative. I look forward to seeing you again in the next one.